take a start on PCSE Online and user management in PCSE Online. OK, so like I said, we are doing the presentation a little bit differently this time. So you're going to be really familiar with Brenda, a report Brenda. We're going to be putting her through her paces throughout this session. But basically, Brenda is a new administrator at the PCSE webinar test practice, and it's her responsibility to register these patients of practices. Now, the practice that she works at has just been through a large restructure and the original person in charge no longer works there. So this basically means that the practice are potentially missing vital emails from PCSE. Now, as patient registration isn't a transformed solution in PCSE Online, Brenda will need to have a valid email address set up, along with knowing who the main contact is at the practice. Now, the main contact is the one person at the practice that is registered as the main contact in PCSE Online. Now, currently, Brenda doesn't receive any emails from PCSE and she isn't familiar with PCSE processes and she could really benefit from receiving communications and updates from PCSE. Now, it may also be that eventually Brenda's going to need to cover some extra work scenarios. So looking at things like ordering supplies or managing the movement of medical records. And eventually she may even move on to do other things such as perform list changes and even things re related to pensions and payments. So with that in mind, I just wanted to go through this slide again. Now, I know I went through this briefly in part one, but we did get quite a few questions about it. So I'm just going to run through it quickly again with you. As I've previously mentioned, patient registrations aren't processed directly through PCSE Online. However, if Brenda started to work on other practice duties, she is going to need some various roles to do those. Now, in order to do the other roles in PCSE Online, she's first going to need to speak to her user administrator. As you can see how it's set out, we've got three separate areas in PCSE Online for practices. So we've got the supplies and logistics area, we've got the performalist services area, and we've got the GP pensions and payments area. Now, each area in PCSE Online has its own user administrator. As you can see, the box is in pink. That is a user administrator role. As a user administrator, the only responsibility they have is to be able to sign people up to have an account and provide the other users the roles that they need. In Brenda's case, if she wants to be able to order supplies at the practice at some point, she's going to need to speak to the main contact at the practice. Now, the reason she needs to speak to the main contact is because that's the user administrator within the supplies and logistics area. Say, for example, Brenda's been promoted and she's going to be looking at some pension things. The main contact isn't going to be able to assign her some roles to be able to watch some pension work. She is going to have to find out who the GPP user administrator is for payments and pensions. She'll need to speak to that user administrator who will then be able to go in and assign Brenda the roles that she needs. Now, as well, the registrations team at PCSE do often liaise with the main contact at the practice. If there isn't anybody set up at the practice as a main contact, then chances are you're going to be missing vital emails from PCSE, especially when patient registrations are confirmed. OK, so like I say, it's just a brief overview of that. This slide that I've got, it has, it has actually been taken from a user guide that's available on the PCSE website. Now, you'll see on each little box, there is a little eye in a circle. Now, it is an interactive guide, which means that you can go in and you can click each role and it tells you more information about what each role can do. So, like I say, if you do need to know anything more about that, then just have a look on the PCSE website in the user management guide. OK, so again, I know I went through this in part one, but just to confirm the process about changing main contacts in PCSE Online, as I've already mentioned, we, PCSE do use the main contact quite regularly with regards to patient registrations. So I think the main thing is just make sure that the main contact is up to date and current at the practice because you can only have one at a time at each practice. I know that's not convenient with regards to covering annual leave and things like that, but unfortunately you are only allowed one main contact registered in PCSE Online. 
Now, the main contacts manage permissions and roles for those that need to order supplies and manage medical records in PCSE Online. The main contact is a little bit different to the other two user administrators, so your PL, Performer List Administrator, and your GP Payments and Pensions. The other user administrators can assign someone else to be a user administrator, but that's not the case with the main contact. You can only have the one, and if it needs to be changed, you do need to contact PCSE in order for us to go in and change that on the system. Now, if you do find that your main contact has left, and you know, in this case, Paul Brendish has turned up, they've had a big restructure, nobody knows who's doing what. So she'll need to contact PCSE and let us know who we need to set up as the main contact. Now, you can email the PCSE inquiries team, and I've put the email address on the slide there. But when you are emailing in, we just ask that you do include the organisation code, the name and the email address of the main contact of who you actually want it to be. OK, so let's just say Brenda doesn't have any roles at the moment in PCSE online but a lot of the work that she does is really important. Now, how PCC kind of works is that we send communications to people based on the roles that they do have, have in PCC online. Now, Brenda doesn't have any roles, but she's still really interested in any updates and things like that that we are sending out. So if Brenda wants to have a look at what communications have been sent, then that's absolutely fine. She can visit the PCSE website. And as you can see on the top in the um, yellow box I've highlighted the news tab now when you click in there you'll see that you've got GP and GP practice ophthalmic dental and commissioners so what we do when we send the communications out probably more but most relevant for you guys is the GP bulletin so we will update the news page with the GP bulletin in the GP and GP practice area so again as Brenda doesn't have any roles she's not going to be sent that communications from PCSE now, if she finds that it's really useful and she does actually want to be sent that every month when we send it out, she can also subscribe to communications that are going to be relevant to her and her role. Now, as you can see what I've highlighted in yellow at the bottom where it says subscribe, if you click that, it comes up with the four of as I'm showing on screen. And it's just a case of Brenda going in, completing all the details, so including her name, email address, organisation code, job title, things like that. And then you can see there's the boxes that she can tick to suit what communication she's going to be sent. So that is an option if you are currently not receiving any communications, but you do feel they will benefit you going forward. I mean, we recommend that you only select the communications that are relevant to you so you're not being sent unnecessary things that you don't need. Um, we'd sooner you just get the emails that you do need and then you can catch up with any updates that we do have. OK, so let's say Brenda now has been given PCSE online access and we just wanted to let her know where she can actually sign into PCSE online. Now, to access PCSE online will be through the PCSE website. And as you can see, I've highlighted it in yellow there. So once she's been given access, visit the PCSE website and she can just click that tab there. She could potentially bookmark it or something like that if it's easy for her. OK, so to summarise then, Brenda is going to need um, access to various things so she can manage her work both in and out of PCSE online. Now, this includes have, having a valid NHS.net email address and having the correct access in PCSE online for the jobs that she needs to complete in the practice. She'll need to know who her main contact is so she can be assigned the correct roles. And if there is no main contact, then she'll need to contact PCSE in order to get that set up. PCSE send communications to those with relevant roles in PCSE online. So again, if Brenda isn't set up in PCSE online but wants to view past communications, then she can do so by just looking at the news page that I've just shown you on the PCSE website. And because she's new, she probably needs training. We do have a wealth of information on the PCSE website and on the PCSE YouTube channel. So, you know, it's probably a good idea to let her know that she can go on there and try and have a look at some of the processes that we've got. OK, so that's everything that I wanted to run through with regards to user management in PCSE online and getting Brenda set up for the tasks that she needs to undertake at the practice. I'm just going to take a little break there for a minute and just ask Marie if there's any questions that have been coming in on the Q&A that she wants to run through.
There was just one that's come in regarding if a main contact is on leave, are they able to assign the role in the meantime? Now, it's not really recommended that we temporarily amend the main contact unless the main contact has actually left the practice or is on long term sick, that sort of thing. But if they're just on short term annual leave, we wouldn't recommend to change it to someone else. And they would recommend setting up a mail forwarding in that scenario just so that nothing is missed but from a main contact perspective it would be the rejected registration emails that are sent that that's what they would suggest putting up a mail forwarding for just so that if they're waiting particularly for a patient then they're not going to miss that while the main contacts are annual leave. Yeah that's great thanks Marie and I think with the rejected registration it also goes through GP links as well so there's also a backup there isn't there.